We have a bulletin just received. I've never encountered anything like this world. Project 2, Aesthetics of Moving Images. In our introduction to this course, we talked about the blurring of boundaries between mediums. If it's made on a screen and it's viewed on a screen, any image can be made to move or change over time, rather than an example of a different medium. In the digital world, this is simply something you can do with your image if you wish. Your image can move and change over time, and whether it does or not is based on your intentions and the aesthetic needs of your piece. From vines and gifs to gaming videos and cat videos to full narrative movies, the moving image is more prevalent than ever in creative content. In our second assignment, we'll explore this in a simple animation project. Like we did in the, the last project, we'll assemble many elements and synthesize them into a unified design. Unlike the last project, your design will change over time. In Digital Color class, as well as your other foundation classes, we've talked a lot about composition and design. So the primary question we'll explore in this project is, how do you create an effective composition with proper balance and emphasis if the image keeps changing over time? As the beginning of my answer to that question, I want to tell you a story. In the early days of animation, everything was drawn by hand. Film playing at 24 frames per second meant 24 hand drawings for every second of animation. Even while these pioneers were inventing a medium, they needed lots and lots of artists. And since it was a new medium, many of the artists were inexperienced. A system was designed that allowed the best and most experienced artists to draw the key frames, which were the main important poses or compositions in a scene. And then the less experienced artists would start their careers as in-betweeners, these less experienced artists would do the drawings in between the main compositions created by the more experienced artists, animating them so that they transition from one important composition to the next composition. So I bet you can see where I'm going with this. The answer to my earlier question, how do you create an effective composition if the images keep changing over time, is to create a moving image that transitions from one well-considered composition to another, and so on over time. Doing this successfully is the main objective of our project. So, what should you consider to be a key frame in your animation? As in most things with art, the answer will change to some extent based on your individual project and what you're trying to do with it. Generally speaking though, any pose that starts a movement or ends a movement, or involves a dramatic pause or an important story beat if it's a narrative video, these are probably key frames where special attention should be paid to the composition in these frames. It's worth noting that keyframing and tweening are still important terms in most time-based digital software. And now you know where those terms came from. So it's a nice thing that the technical aspects of this project are a perfect metaphor for the aesthetic objective of this project. Creating successful compositions keyframes, and transitions between them, tweening in a moving image, unity and clarity. With animation and moving images, there are also two often conflicting things that you need to address in order to make a successful work. They are clarity and unity. You need various elements to be different enough, contrasting enough, so that they are clear enough to be seen and understood easily in your moving composition. But at the same time, they must be similar enough and visually related enough that all of the elements look like they belong together in the animated world that you've created. Things to think about in relationship to clarity. Background versus foreground. 
keep a background less contrasty, more faded, more blurry, less colorful, but still visually related to the foreground. These are techniques that could be incorporated to help clarify your moving composition. It seems obvious, but especially if it's an important element in your composition, make sure that it's clearly seen as it's moving over the background and other elements. Make sure that nothing is obscured, for instance, by placing dark things against other dark things as they move across the frame. Avoid overlapping objects that are too similar in color. In other words, make a clear design even as it changes over time. In terms of unity, just like our last project, think of styles and visual approaches as visual themes that reoccur throughout all of your elements in varying degrees in order to bring structure to your work. Don't forget that a limited color palette with colors that reoccur throughout your composition, that's a great tool for creating unity among the elements in your composition. Your assignment. There are many different kinds of animation, like stop motion, including claymation, frame by frame drawn animation, and digital 3D animation. What we are talking about for your assignment is puppet-based animation. What I mean by that is creating various elements and parts and moving them around using keyframe animation techniques. Your assignment is to create a 30-second keyframe or puppet-based animation using Photoshop and After Effects. You'll add sound effects and or music using Apple's GarageBand on the Mac. Your animation does not need to tell a story. It can just be an aesthetic experience. Create purposeful compositions and effective transitions throughout your piece. Use well-considered visual themes, including color and general style of visual elements. Create audio that complements and enhances your visual experience using Apple GarageBand. Export as a QuickTime movie and give it to me on the due date or before. Student solutions. Let's look at some student solutions.
Now on to the next video. And as always, feel free to ask me questions.